microphone a little closer to you so we can, uh, so we can hear you. Um, you and I were talking out in the hall a little while ago. You, uh, you sort of stayed away from the media coverage a little bit. What was your experience after your obviously heroic act? Uh, obviously, the media descended on the scene. Why don't you give us a sense of what that day was like from a media coverage standpoint? Well, first off, um, I've never sat in on anything like this on um, Little Pepper. <laughs> I can't string together as many sentences as they have. <laughs> well, they get paid to string together the sentences. We're going to catch up on that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. Um, I, stayed, I stayed away from the media. It, it, I did it on purpose, but I was glad to do it. Um, after it all happened, I was sitting on the, the man, and uh, once the police officer came, I got off of him because I knew he was in charge. And I went back over the fence back to the we were pouring concrete, and um, it's important that you finish concrete or you're going to jackhammer it up. <laughs> so I went, back, straight. I, got, I went back and I just watched poor Carlos and Mario on the other side of the fence. Carlos had to stay with the media because he used his truck to hit the guy, and Mario <laughs> broke his hand on his head. Right. So I went back and I had finished concrete minus two guys. And I was watching the helicopters flying by, and I'm like, man, I'm so glad I'm not out there. <laughs> so you obviously talked to Carlos and Mario about their experiences. Yeah. Relate how, how that went for them. Well, I, tr I tried to get Carlos to come here and uh, trade with him, but he, he had to leave. The crew has abandoned you. <laughs> His uh, girlfriend's at the doctor, they're pregnant, so they're, oh. they're having one there. Right. Well, they're uh, that's a good excuse. Yeah. So Carlos loved it. He was all over it. Um, I wasn't jealous of him, but then I, there was a point where I was like, well, by me ignoring the media, I'm seeming a little foolish. So I, uh, I went on a Scott and VR radio show because it's a sports talk show, and it felt like I was just sitting at a bar with two buddies talking sports and then telling them about what just happened. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty comfortable. And a lot, more, a lot more comfortable than sitting around for two weeks thinking about what I had to say when I got here. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, so I'm interested in, in what you thought about for those two weeks, because obviously the, the, the format here is that you would grade the media coverage of the event. And so tell us what you thought about uh, how the media reacted and, and how, if you saw anything that made you go, boy, I didn't know they would do something like that. Pizza. Um, I thought I, I thought they did good. Sure. They did they did a really good job. Uh, it was fairly accurate. I don't think you can get any more accurate than if you're there. Maybe uh, people with military experience or people in the police force know that what happened doesn't always come out the way it, it really happened. The only way the media would have got it completely right is if they were right there filming it. So, but for the most part, it was it was fairly accurate. It was, it was very fair. They uh, I said I didn't want to talk and. Uh, they left me alone for the most part. A San Diego Union guy got to my house, knocked on my door, and talked to my wife, which was a little weird, but he didn't. He was it was just wonderful. The article was great. Uh, he, I think people just wanted a hero, and they wanted to hear a story, so they had to get one. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a good point in that it's it's rare for stories such as the one you were involved in to come out so well. I mean, there were no fatalities, and you guys were probably responsible for that. The guy was reloading. So you, you had to know that people would want to come and try to build you up and be part of it. Well, it wasn't anything I had against the media. I didn't even talk to my mom. She was berserk. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I just wanted to be left alone and go back to my daily activities. I, I, I was uncomfortable with it. Just with my family and my friends and my wife, like, well, you're a hero. I don't, I don't care. I just, I, I don't want to be real. So how do you feel now? Uh, I'm a little more comfortable talking now. Uh, it seems like a long time ago. We got the trial coming up on the 7th of March. So maybe there's going to be more things starting when that happens. You expect to be called to testify? Oh, yeah. Uh, I know I will be. And uh, it's not as bad as I thought. And because I wasn't the guy shooting at children, I'm being treated a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice 
excellent point. <laughs>
of votes, two thirds of them voted to do it, and then it went to the governor's desk for a week later. He claimed. Is that a secret backroom deal? No, that's a bill that got debated on the floor of the legislature. We got 38 million people in California. They elected 80 members of the assembly, 40 members of the Senate to make decisions in a deliberative legislative process. Now, was it quick? Yeah, it was quick. Uh, you know, but was it was it unexpected? Absolutely, was it unexpected? Yeah, I mean, all those things occur. But is it fair to say it was a secret deal done entirely in a back room? No, that's not a fair description. But the first tweet out the gate described it as that. And so that's just what it became. And at a certain point, you just go, well, I, you know, you're going to get this. So Talking about the redevelopment cap. Yeah, the redevelopment cap. So I, I just think, I think the world has changed so much and that information moves so fast. Um, that once it gets said, you know, I mean, the initial report says the congresswoman in Arizona is dead. So worldwide, everyone says she's dead. Well, she was, you know, and 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 so I, I don't know how if you're a, if you're a reporter, you don't you know take what someone else has done and go with it because you have to get out there quickly or people will change the channel to find what's there. And so I'm not really I, I kind of walk through the the change in technology and culture to say you know I don't really know. That it, it's current re reporters' fault. Um, I, I just think the world has changed, and we're all grappling with how do we deal with this change. You know, I'm grappling with with how something I put on Facebook is now a press release. You know, I mean, I can't say anything in social media that isn't construed as a on the record statement for me, right. an official statement from yeah. our legislator. Yeah. Lorena, no, it's just changing. Yeah. Lorena, how are your thoughts on on uh, on that, and how maybe uh, how you would counsel journalists to try to overcome some of this, because it's true. I mean, it's be first or die in this world. Um, I, I loved that Nathan said you can't put something on Facebook without being press release. Um, I learned on Twitter. God Thank forbid you, I say uh, something and see it on television and have warning language about the language. Um,